you would join us. Hey, Star Wars fans and action figure collectors. We're looking at a playset today. The Armourer's Forge. I've had this sitting here pretty much all week. <laughs> I've just had... I've had a busy week. Um, and yeah, I, it's been killing me knowing that this thing is sitting here for about five days waiting to be opened. Um, it's, but I'm finally deciding to sit down and do this tonight. So I'm looking forward to cracking this one open. Uh, I opted for this one over the Moff Gideon hallway playset. Um, that's one I might pick up eventually, but not overly in a rush. Uh, this one was definitely more of a nice sort of almost a vignette diorama kind of thing. Real fit nicely on the shelf. Um, I like the look of the, uh, Moff Gideon's hallway, but um, yeah, I decided to stick with this one. Right. Some pictures on the side, looks pretty good. I like the extra Mandalorian helmets it's going to come with. I haven't picked up the four pack yet. I'm not even sure if I will. Um, we'll see. Yeah, it's looking. Looking pretty nice. I'm looking forward to uh, cracking this open. Looking forward to a new version of the Armorer too with the jetpack. So we'll do a uh, we'll do a review on that figure as well while we're going. But yeah, without further ado, let's crack this one open and have a look. All right, guys. Here we have the forge all laid out. The little instruction panel, pretty straightforward. Little accessories. Obviously, we did the review of the armor yesterday. If you want to go back and check that out, I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video with the figure. Let's have a look about the playset. Love the uh, the tall chest there; looks pretty cool. So let's move that to the side and uh, let's start putting this thing together. Obviously, oh, let's open these packets because uh, yeah, I think we're going to need these. Okay, so this is the. Uh, Mythosaur skull. That's nice. That looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. Nice sort of metallic look to it. It was present in the uh, the covert sort of lair on Navarro back in season one. So that looks great. We've got the bits of tools. Let's have a look. So we've got this little anvil stand. I think you can pop either that one on there for the sort of the curvature. So when she's uh, heating up that and whacking it, it gives it that sort of curvature. And you can swap it out for just the sort of standard anvil there which looks cool I like either so and we got some tools we've got her little sort of gripper thing we have that one that didn't come with the figure but came with the original version of the armor and then the little heat pot which is cool and then we'll get to this third bag Trying to be careful with the knife. I did slice my finger open last week. <laughs> I never learn. All right, so here we've got little Grogu with his little, he's got his chain mail and he's got his little armor plate. And that's super cool. That's, that's nice. See, we do have a lot of little three and three quarter scale Grogu's, but Hasbro did sort of stay pretty much true to their word. And they said every version will be slightly different. So where there's a slight little tweak in the mould of the ears. The look on his face, the mould of the body. So I do appreciate that. So that's cool. He looks good. Just something different. And then we've got three Mandalorian helmets. Three spares. And I like the idea that you get that four pack... If you get a couple of extra four packs, you can do a little bit of switching out. So 
we've got like a night owl helmet there. We've got a different version of Paz Vizsla's helmet, different colour. Pretty much the same helmet, just repainted, but that's cool. And then this one here is slightly different repaint of the Din Djarin sort of style helmet, which is really cool. Each has got their little ball joint in there, so you can do some switching and swatching around. But yeah, let's uh, let's get on to the uh, the main main attraction here. So we've got the uh, I, the only review I've seen of this is uh, Sci-Fi's, and uh, yeah, I'm interested to uh, take a look at some of this myself. So um, so pop that base in. It looks like it just sort of snaps in pretty pretty easily. Not too tight there, that's good. We get the Mythosaur skull plugged into the wall. That's not going anywhere. So let's just take a look at this. Um, yeah, I'm kind of tempted to uh, you know, do a little bit of weathering to it. I think the sculpt's there. And the fact that it does give off sort of natural shadows with all the, all the nooks and creases of the rock formation, I think that looks fine. Um, but yeah, sort of on camera it looks good. And to the naked eye, it's it's a little bit plain. Not a complaint. Um, obviously, it's a cost thing. But yeah, that could be something I'm I'm tempted to uh, you know maybe dismantle and put a little bit of a bit of a wash on it, and weather it up a little bit. And then we've got the uh, the roof. You know, this is what uh, Sci-Fi was sort of saying. You know, this sort of top part when that's up there, unless your unless your shelf is right above it, if you're looking down at this at any point, you know that top looks really unfinished. You know, it just needs a flat flat surface on it just to just to fill that in. You know, it's it looks you know it's fine that way. You know, once you've got that on on there and it's all fitted, that looks fine from from the underneath. Yeah, the second you look on top, it just looks a little bit unfinished. Um, so I don't know. I, I feel like I could come up with a with a bit of a solution to that. I'm not sure how and what I'm going to do yet. But um, yeah, it needs it, I think. It does. Well, I do appreciate the fact that, you know, you've got the the part here. So we're going to put this on before we put the roof on. So this is the uh, almost the sort of exhaust, I guess. That sort of just sits in there. I like the idea you could potentially put some lighting through it. And if you've got lighting on your shelf, you get a little bit of extra illumination through the uh, through the top there. So we'll pop that top on. And then this, the bottom part here, the furnace. Let's take a look at that. That looks cool. I've seen people sort of light this up as well. I reckon even just get a little little flickering uh, tea light candle I think would look cool underneath that. I'm not sure how much light it would give out, but um, not not an actual candle, but you can get the little battery operated tea light candles. And you can just pop one under there if you're not willing to do any sort of wiring or anything, but that's oh, a cool piece. It looks nice. I like the, uh, I do like the flames. If you can get that to light up, that'll look super cool. We'll just pop that in there. If it sits in there nicely, that's fine. That's good. So here you've kind of got the forge there. You can kind of get the, the anvil. And you sort of just keeps a couple of the tools sort of just hanging off the over the rails. And then, uh, yeah, let's have a look at the uh, tool chest here. So that's kind of cool. So we've got a nice little storage compartment there for the helmets or whatever else. You can slide a couple of $50 notes in there and stash that away. <laughs> and yeah, the little tool chest there. There's room for extra tools.
so that's nice. I might actually chuck one of those other ones in there as well. So that's kind of cool. Not a lot of extra detail in there. Obviously the stick is on the background, but um, you know, if you're setting this up and you've got a few little accessories and bits and pieces you can put on there. Get some helmets. Yeah, you can you can use your imagination and, and do what you want with this thing and have some fun with it, or you close it up. You just have it as a have it has it as a little side piece there, which is cool. It's not a super flush close there, is it? I never would have thought those doors would sort of come completely shut. There's a little bit of a gap there. Looks like they're on properly, so there's no issues there. Well, it's maybe designed that way. So it's sort of sitting nice on the side there, but yeah, it's got that nice, that big sort of gap in the middle. It's not a, not a big deal. I mean, me personally, I'm going to be displaying this thing sort of open anyway, as a, as her workstation. Maybe have the anvil down here. I don't think that's a big deal, but um, you know what? As a diorama piece to go on the shelf with all the Mandalorian stuff, I'm very, very happy with this set. I think it's really cool. Like that they're doing little little things like this. It's fantastic. I, yeah, I'm probably more inclined to try and get that Mandalorian four pack, so I can have a few extra Mandalorians. Hanging around it. And you've got enough Din Djarin's who can have one in there. And try and find a few extra Mandalorians. Have have them sort of hanging around. Hanging around the forge. But yeah, little Grogu there. Very cool. I do love this playset. I think this is really, really cool, to be honest. I, I dig it. I look forward to uh, setting it up on the shelf with all my other Mandos. Mandalorians, it's, it's a shelf space that's going to have to uh, spread out a little bit. I'm going to have to separate the Ahsoka stuff and the Book of Boba Fett stuff and try and find some more space for them as the uh, the Mandalorian-centric area has very much overfilled <laughs> with the addition of Blurgs and speeder bikes and, and all that kind of thing. Navarro, Cantina, and, you know, if I do end up getting Moff Gideon's playset, you know, it's going to be... Very, very full. But again, I have reviewed this figure. Oh, that was the last video I did. So if you want to check that out, I'll drop a link right at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. Love to hear your thoughts on the Mandal the Armourer's Forge from the Mandalorian Season 3. It just needs a nice little roof. <laughs> but hey, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate your time. Um, yeah, again, love drop a comment down below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. And we'll see you again for some more Star Wars toy reviews very soon. Till then, may the force be with you. Always.